what up guys welcome back to the channel we are out here today blood stain um man that's really good lighting um it's the end of the year racing is pretty much over um winter is upon us and there's actually one more test and tune day left of our little local track i say local track it's like two and a half hours away um, we have one test and tune day left and they're actually doing a uh, small tire race as well i think we're going to enter a small tire race probably be quite a few cars there there's a good chance it gets rained out um, we got like a 40 percent chance as of right now we're going to get into messing with the blood stain and trying to prep before this race we got a package in the mail today for motion race works and uh, it's a timing pointer so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to do some maintenance on the car i want to go through and verify the ignition timing on this this motor i did weld the crank reluctor on it um, but i did not go in and verify the timing and that's something i need to do especially on this max effort stuff i honestly i should do it on everything um but the first time i didn't do that or the only time that i didn't no okay so i've never done it honestly i did it on the 6.2 when the 6.2 was in here and we found out that the crank collector moved and it was 55 degrees off so um i went ahead and bought a timing pointer like one specific for the truck spacing because all my cars use truck spacing and i'll if i got to i'll just pull it off one car move it to the other and just continue to use it rather than try and bend a piece of welding wire and hope for the best um that's probably going to be a little more precise than a piece of welding wire um let me get this thing fired up we're gonna get it over to the garage uh we'll get jacked up and pull this charge pipe off we'll uh mount this and then we'll go through the process to try and get it ready to um, find tdc and then we'll go through and see if we can find out how far off if any the timing is on this and then we got to change the oil change the plugs and uh we got to do an nro bar adjustment and stuff just to get the car ready for the uh, no prep race this weekend but anyways let's get the car moved and we'll get in the into garage it. Got the uh, upper boost pipe off, and uh, I went ahead and drained my catch can. That's something I always try and do every time I, like, I'm messing with the car. I just automatically drain the catch can. Um, one thing I'm thinking, I think I want to shorten this. I'm starting to think I don't like that sticking out there, so I might try and shorten that up to where the teardrop just barely sticks out, and it'll make the exhaust look bigger. It kind of looks. I liked it in the beginning. Now I don't know so much. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you if I should change that. Um, hell, I don't know. Maybe we should change the whole turbo kit. Maybe we should put a center mount instead of a side mount deal there. I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas what you think we should do to this thing. Um, like I said, I got the charge pipe off. I went ahead and pulled the valve cover and the coils off this side. Got it ready because one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to disconnect the rocker arms on that cylinder because I will tell you, if you got a piston stop in there, the valve will hit it. If you got a big cam, more than, honestly, probably any cam, piston stop, the way, the angle of the spark plug, it's going to hit it. Um, but I got to loosen those up. I'm going to go ahead and probably just go ahead and pull all the plugs out of this thing and just change them. Um, they haven't been changed yet. And then these are my uh, Liberty Performance Roller Rockers. I actually really like these things. I think whenever I go back together with the BK, I think I might buy another set of those for it. And uh, that way, you know, if something were to ever happen, I've got another set that if I needed to, to use from one or the other. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through and uh, pull the plugs out of it and uh, put the uh, pointer on down here. I'm gonna, probably gonna have to pull the spark plug or the, probably gonna have to pull the serpentine belt off of it as well. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get that stuff pulled off and we'll start laying this out so we can find true top dead center. All right, well, I'm an idiot. And I didn't think about the fact that I run the Summit Balancers um, on all my cars and this timing pointer does not work with those because the Summit Balancer is so much smaller these are, I think, mainly designed for a stock size balancer. The stock balancer is huge. Um, these are not. Let me show you. <clears throat> As you can tell there, we got a uh, pretty big old gap uh, underneath here, and it's really hard to, you know, get an accurate point. 
on something. Um, so there needs to be one of these that's got more bend in it. Like I could probably take this because obviously like there's numbers here on the balancer. You can't really see it in the camera, but there's actually numbers here. I could probably put a bend in it or two, put another bend here down and then another bend out and probably get that pointer really close to the balancer. I just don't know if I want to do that. Uh, might have to check with motion and see if they've got another option for this, but I needed it this week because I'm trying to set it like right now. So I'm going to contemplate that whole situation. I'm going to go ahead and get the plugs out of this side. Um, I'm honestly going to pull the plugs out of the whole thing, um, but get the plugs out, pull these rocker arms here off. And then uh, hopefully by then I'll have something in my brain about what I want to do about that timing point. So what I did was I put a couple more bins in this. I probably should have spent a little more time measuring, but uh, it's a little closer to the balancer now. As you can see there but my pointer part of the this piece here is obviously like sitting out here where the belt is so i can't really mark it there because then my paint mark will disappear um so what i think what i'm going to do is i'll probably put a little bit more bend in it try and get it a little closer to the balancer and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill a hole in the center of this where it puts me about in the center of where the uh, timing marks are and then that way i can go in and i can mark it with like a, a black sharpie i can just pull a black sharpie dot rotate it over black sharpie dot and then i can pull this back off split the difference and then put like a um like an orange mark on the balancer and then i all i gotta do is uh just shine the light in that hole and then uh, as long as i see that hole i mean or see the mark in the hole then i guess that's showing me where i'm at the only downfall is it's not going to show me how many degrees one direction or the other so that kind of sucks um I don't know. We'll try. We'll see. Maybe my theory behind that's not not right. Um, I probably should have went about this a little different way, rather than my little zigzag here. I probably just could have. Well, I guess I kind of had to. I could have tried to straighten it out, but I was afraid I was going to break the aluminum, so that's why I opted this way. Um, but it still needs another little little zigzag. This. this this point right here, this should have been a little longer, so then it would have shortened this piece up. So I should have put it about here, and then it probably would have brought the point back here. But just throw it around. You don't need that where we're going. Um, I'm gonna try this if this doesn't work. Um, I've got that piece down there. I'll just put a piece of wire on it and just roll with it that way. Um, got the rockers off, got my homemade pistons stop here i'm gonna throw that in there and then uh we'll go through and try and see if we can find tdc on this thing all right well with a little modification we got a a pointer now and i got it shaved off and back here so now i can mark the balancer and uh i think it might hit a little bit i don't know can you tell me if it's hitting i don't think it is but it was when i was messing with it earlier it sounded like it was hitting but uh now we can put our piston stop in here and uh this homemade piston stop was a spark plug a what used to be a um what's the word i'm looking for yeah i don't remember what i what i called that but i put a nut on, or a bolt on it and it was too small i wouldn't touch the piston and yeah so and then welded it to a socket that was broken so yeah classy classy piston stop there and i'm pretty sure that's it all right I'll grab a socket and uh we'll rotate this thing over and find our spots and then figure out where tdc is i had my two marks mark here and mark here i laid my tape out which i should have put tape on it first but i didn't um, but i marked the balancer first then laid tape down and then went through and then marked it pulled it off and measured it and this is my tdc mark so i'm gonna mark it with a marker to start like that, I'm gonna pull it off and I'm actually gonna put a, like a, a paint mark, not just a magic marker mark. And uh, then we can put our rocker arms back on, put the valve cover, coils, plugs back in it. We can fire it up, get the timing light out and see if we can find true TDC on this thing and see how far off the uh, timing is in the laptop. All right, so. We got everything back together 
and uh, I had to run up the street and grab a new timing light because for whatever reason, my Matco timing light does not like to work on the LS stuff. I tried different plug wires and stuff thinking maybe it was getting weird trying to read through like some of these MSD and Taylor wires and stuff. So I put OEM wires on it. Still wouldn't, still couldn't get the flash. Um, so I went up to O'Reilly's and grabbed one of their, I say cheap timing lights. The thing was like $10 or something. Um, so not super cheap, but uh, went up there and I'm gonna burn it. Uh, picked up this timing light. Got my ground, got my positive. Since I don't have a battery up here, I just feed it off the back of the alternator. And then we got the pickup on the number one cylinder. So what we'll do is we're gonna go in here and uh, set our static timing, as you can see there. If you go up here to this little sink deal, right there next to it, you click on that and it drops down and there's a deal that says set static timing. And then you'll go in here and then you'll lock that timing at 18, 20 degrees or whatever you, Whatever you want to set it to, usually it'll run pretty good, somewhere around 18, 20 degrees. So I've got it set at 18 degrees. We'll fire it up and make sure we're close. see there we set it at like 20 degrees static set the light to 20 degrees and then it should hit our tdc mark and it was within like a degree to two degrees ish um and i'm, I'm okay with that um if it was five or six degrees i probably would have gone in and i would have set up a a table and tried to change that but uh you know within a degree or two i'm, I'm okay with that that'll work perfectly fine um so it makes me feel a lot better makes me realize that my tune-up's not that far off so we are good to go there that's a good feeling so come sunday when we take this thing out to the small tire race i'll know that it's good it's got a fresh set of plugs in it and uh we should be good to go but that's gonna do it for tonight's video guys um just gotta throw the charge pipe back on it change the oil and do a anti-roll bar adjustment with me in the car and then we'll be ready to go. So 
until next time thanks for watching guys keep following along don't forget comment like subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one